Hello, I'm Pastor Scott, and welcome to Worship Here with Sanctuary, a safe place to explore faith. Also, a special welcome to all mothers, mothers of children, mothers to furry four-legged family members and maybe other pets, and also welcome to those who have been mothers to people outside of their biological families. Thank you for your commitment, for your generous love, and for making this world a better place. We love you. This week, people posted to Facebook about what is special about their mothers or mother figures in their lives. Some of those responses were very touching. They, they said things like the unconditional love that the mother has had for them or maybe the gentle spirit that they embodied. One woman shared about how her parents took in lots of foster kids throughout her childhood and her mom fought diligently over the years without any kind of financial benefit to get the medical needs that each one of them ha- had Uh, met and to get them new school clothes every single year, to give them a table to eat at, Christmas presents to open, Easter eggs to hunt, and a family where they belonged. What an amazing gift. Now today we recognize that God, while being well beyond any kind of label we might give, is certainly a mother to us. Not only because God has given us life, but that she has nurtured, comforted, and given us a loving family much like the foster kids that were mentioned on Facebook. Now, there are many places in the Bible that talk of God's mothering personality too. And one is the author of Isaiah, who saw God's mothering qualities and how she cared for the nation of Israel when they were in desperate need. Good morning. Today's first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verses 12 through 14, and this comes from the message translation. I'll pour robust well-being into her like a river, the glory of nations like a river in flood. I'll nurse at her breast, nestle in her bosom, and be bounced on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I'll comfort you. You will be comforted in Jerusalem. You'll see this and burst with joy. You'll feel 10 foot tall as it becomes apparent that God is on your side and against God's enemies. I invite you to pray with me. God of provision and unconditional love, on this day we acknowledge the importance of motherhood among us. We first give thanks that you are a loving mother to us, to all of us. From your, being, uh, from your being, all life was born, and in your care, all creation is nurtured. You've formed us in your image as your children and gathered us together as like a brood under your wing. You have united us as siblings in one human family, and we're grateful to be your children. Today, we celebrate the fullness of your love reflected in a variety of human expressions of motherhood. Gracious God, we pray to you. Amen.
Now, today we're considering that among the diverse imagery in the Bible and from our culture, that there are many feminine and mothering images of God that we see. We know that God is neither male or female and truly beyond any kind of label or any kind of language that we might give. And we need to be careful not to conflate God with the language that we use to describe God. God will always be bigger than any language or metaphor or story that we use to describe her. If we find ourselves uncomfortable hearing God described with female pronouns, perhaps we need to look at what has shaped our understanding of God as male. Now, through history, people have searched for words, images, and narrative stories and symbols and the like to describe God. This has led people to talk about God in human terms that help them relate with the vastness of God's reality. In this way, all the ways we describe God are tools then to help us encounter the reality of God. But the language that we're using is not God, and so we need to make that distinction. And it's not surprising, however, that most of the imagery that we see in the Bible regarding God is masculine. Because even though the stories in the Bible were written by different people in different places from different cultures, nearly all of them were paternalistic. That means that the cultures from which we get the Bible were controlled by, uh, politically and socially by men. And women were often viewed as less important than men. And we also don't see female pronouns for God in the Bible. Now, that's not to suggest that God has a masculine gender. Uh, There's a lot more to this story. For example, um, one dimension we could look at is that in the times that the ancient Hebrew scriptures were written, now these are the stories from what we call the Old Testament. At that time and through those generations, there were prominent religious practices that were around in the culture that had people worship nature as mother goddess. Now, these practices merged sexuality with ecstasy and economic prosperity. They lumped and brought all of those things together. And it often included prostitution even in their their temples of worship. So for the authors of these Old Testament stories, it seems that using male pronouns was at least in part to place God above nature and distance what they were doing, their faith and their practices, from those who practiced goddess worship inside the culture. Now, considering this, it might even be striking that in the mix of the scripture that we do see, we also find a number of references to God with female characteristics. You see, there are always multiple stories. There are always layers within culture. And there are always alternate narratives that run alongside the more prominent ones that we often hear. Most of the female images that we find in the Bible center around two distinct qualities of God. The first is God in the image of a compassionate, loving, caretaking, and protecting mother. The passage that we heard earlier from Isaiah describes God in that way. And here's where we see God also described sometimes like a mother eagle who protects and defends her chicks underneath her wing. Now, the second image that we often see described in Scripture Um, of God as in female language, is God as creator. The one who births people and also births all things into existence. And one passage that describes God in that way is from the letter of 1 John. I invite you to listen to this one. The next reading comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. And this is the N.R. SV translation. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey God's commandments. For the love of God is this that we obey God's commandments. And God's commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? 
This is the one who came from water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Now, the author of this letter was integrating Jesus into a larger narrative of God's presence in the world. We get a hint here of, of her birthing the whole world. And, uh, and in particular, it describes those who claim Jesus as their life compass, as being born of God and becoming her children. Now, in some ways, this creates something like a foster family, right? Uh, this is where we find children from a variety of homes and different situations who come together to share around one common table as siblings together under the care of parents who then mother them. The image here grows in that the children are strongly identified with their mother such that loving the mother means loving the children and loving the children means loving the mother. We get the feeling here that the children and the mother are, are truly a package deal and simply can't be separated. Such is the quality of Mother God's love for her children. God as our mother is definitely something to celebrate as well. It's true that not all of us have biological mothers who have actually cared for us very well. And you might know some children, you might be one, um, that have been abused or neglected by their mother. And this is awfully painful, traumatic, and simply wrong um, and can also leave lifelong scars on a human being. And for this reason, perhaps it's even more appropriate and important to celebrate God as the good mother who continues to love no matter what, continues to provide the space for healing, continues to encourage, continues to support, continues to see the best in each of us as her beloved children. It's the good mother God who creates a wide open and safe space for her children to play, to stretch their imagination, to question honestly, to experiment, to learn, and to explore what it means to be human without any sort of judgment, only encouragement, sometimes correction, and always an abundance of forgiveness and compassion, always with our best interest in mind. You know, Mother God has given us life, has, has birthed us as her children into this world. And Mother God, like an eagle, has gifted us with the wide open and safe space to stretch our wings and learn to fly, which certainly for us takes trial and error, as we know. Uh, some success, uh, but probably lots more failure, right? But Mother God loves us unconditionally through it all. And as children, from the example set by their mother, so we also must learn from our Mother God how to care for one another. This is an opportunity for us to learn from God how to nurture that safe place for all people to explore faith. And when I say faith, this also includes all of the dimensions of life that together make us human because that's really what faith is about. We all need the safe space that a good mother offers. I invite you to pray with me. Mother God, thank you for loving us as your children. Thank you for providing for us and giving us a community where we're loved and cared for. Thank you for providing the safe place for us to be fully human the way you created us. Help us now to take your lead and provide this kind of safe place for others. In your name we pray. Amen. God, our Father, giver of daily bread, blessing our hands and covering our heads God our mother leading us into peace drawing and comforting all those in need
during this service, I've used female pronouns and maternal images to describe God. Not to suggest that God is a woman, but to say that using this language can say something true about God and further expand our appreciation for, for and experience of a God who is truly beyond all labels. Now, perhaps this has been challenging for some of you and, and maybe for others of you, it's been celebrated. And if so, it says something about the rich diversity that has us together as brothers and sisters in God's family. If it stirred you in some sort of way, I invite you uh, to have a further conversation with us about this. Now, as we finish our time in worship together, may you be filled with hope. May you have the courage to do what is good. May you walk with those who are weary, support those who are weak, help those who are sick and in pain. May you love and serve those who need you and honor everyone while you rejoice in the blessings of each day as God provides. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go with courage, go with heart, and go in peace. Amen. And remember, we will get through this together. Thank you.